you know, they're just too frightened that they would rather have somebody else take care of everything for them. Yep. Security, they for it. security instead of freedom. That's it. That's right. May I ask your age? <laughs> you sound sure very you can. young. Yeah, how old do I sound? <laughs> you sound very young. <laughs> I, I know. I do sound very young, but I, I am 43. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought you were, like, 18. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and part of the thing is, too, is that I, I, uh, I'm married and I have three kids, and I do get asked out by 23-year-old men sometimes. Oh, like, so you look like you sound, huh? Yes, and then I have to say, oh, honey, uh, I could be your mother. Yeah. And they're just, like, shocked. Good for you. And then when my son comes up, he's 18, he's like, did that guy just ask you out? Uh, that's gross. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've been mistaken for being his, his you know, going uh, with him and uh, being mistaken for being one of his friends from another school instead of his mother. Well, that's we good. Just, we laugh. We laugh about it. I hope it lasts way into your years, my dear. <laughs> well, I have to, I, I want to know this because I don't want my kids enslaved in this. Or my, you know, this is just no life for my children. I refuse to. Good for you. Yeah. To like Terry Terry Lynn, uh, and my name is Don Colleen, um, and I have my whole family involved. So I mean, all my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my parents. Great. Oh yeah, we're just you know we're out here in Montana, and on Montana. Sorry, should, we're on the land. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and you know we're a pretty nice sized group. I would say we're hitting close to two hundred. Wow. Yes. Hey. Good. And yeah, and we just get together and I was on the uh, we uh, we've been going on the radio on mon- uh, Friday mornings out here, just getting people to gather together. That's that's wow. the first job we have to do is we have to assemble so that we can get to know our neighbors, know our community, know the needs and wants, and know one another's conduct within that context. Otherwise, you won't do anything by hitting your garage door, going in, hitting it, and watching the boob tube. You're absolutely correct. And and that's that's the I, I think the the um, biggest enemy we have right there is people who become so antisocial, so um, uh, so busy that we just can't think beyond our own nose. Mhm. And that's that's where they want us. Yeah, and talking and sharing information. They no. And we're just, um, you know, I, I guess I was telling Terry, people out here have a pretty strong attitude of leave me alone. They might not know all of this, but they're sure willing to educate themselves. They just know it's really wrong, and they have this deep-seated leave me alone. I don't want this. You know, I was going to say, out there you have a lot of spirit of freedom. Yes. Yeah, we do. Well, a lot of people are, are not employed by any state or anything. A lot of the folks that I, well, practically everybody that I know in our group, they're all self-employed. They're do it, they're, you know, I'll, I'll do it myself. Um, or, they're and, on the, or, are they, or they're involved in agriculture, right? Yeah, well, um the, I don't have as many people in agriculture in right now, and I think the problem that we're going to have with that is so many of these farmers and ranchers are on the dole, and until they get a real thorn in their side over what's going to come down, mm-hmm. they're not too ready. I just know of a few that have actually told the state and the government, yeah, you can take your check. I don't want to take a single thing from you. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's really rare. You know, when when I was just, I'm 70 years old, when I was a little girl, my father said the parity that they're giving the farmers will be their undoing. Yep. And I mean, that was 65 years ago. Wow. He was way ahead of his time. Wow. Wow. You know, you know I was um, I was in court the other day helping out a young boy. He's 18 years old, and uh, he just served up a 105-mile-an-hour fastball at the court. And they wanted to test him to see if he was a major league ball player. <clears throat> so they had him back in there, and they wanted to see, okay, do we have a major leaguer or do we have a pretender? And uh, and they found out that they had a major leaguer, and uh, he um, 
the judge, it was so interesting because they showed him the underbelly of the whole thing. I mean, we mm-hmm. sat there. But I sat there with his father in the gallery and watched. And here's the interesting thing. They knew exactly who I was, and they knew who his father was. Because, you know, they had people who came back there and talked to us, and then as we were leaving, they had people running out after us yelling our names. <laughs> it was crazy. Mm. But the thing was is, you know, the psalmist says, my husband is known in the gate. So let them, let them know my name. I don't really give a crap if they know my name. That's great that they know who I am. So, but the point was is not that. The point was is the judge said, how'd you get here today? And, uh, well, she said, "What? What? What is your claim?" He said, "I claim the spirit, the Commonwealth of Israel." She said, "Okay, great. Does does the Commonwealth have its own laws?" He said, "Yes." He says, does the, "She said, does the Commonwealth have its own sovereign?" He said, "Yes." He, she says, "Does the Commonwealth have its own venue?" <laughs> that he could not answer. It hmm. does, but mm-hmm. he couldn't answer it. Then she said, how did you get here today? Did you buy gas at one of the corporations that the state provides? Did you you use uh, monies that the state provides? Wow. I mean, you think that that money is just out there for you to use? I mean, for you to just uh, play that, that you just were born into Disneyland and those rides are free? Well, you're right. She tipped it all out, didn't she? And uh, so she she told him, she flat out said, look, if you want to live in the commonwealth of Israel, then you live over in the commonwealth and you abide by those laws and we will leave you alone. Mm. She said, but the moment you trespassed our laws, now you consent to be bound to our law form. And she turned it into a us and us and them. Because I'm telling you right now that if you if you turn it into a us and them relationship, you're gonna have big problems. Because you got to realize that the that the woman or man who's standing in front of you in the position of adversary is your brother. And if you if you try to think of it as a total adversary relationship, well, your emotions, unless you're well skilled with your emotions, they're gonna jump all over you. And then you won't be able to think clearly. Uh, rare is the man or woman that can suppress his anger. Yes. So um, you have to you have to frame it correctly, and so that your emotions can be. And and every time she said, "Son, if you keep on, I'm going to hold you in contempt in my court." He he. I mean, this boy, it was, whether it was a spirit or whether he just had the knowledge, I, I know not. But he said, "I'm sorry." And how are you going to hold somebody in contempt if they say they're sorry? I mean, it just threw her for a loop. She couldn't hold him in contempt. And so she said, what are you doing here today? And he said, well, because I gave a man my word that I would be here today. She says, well, you come here in special appearance, which means you challenge our venue and jurisdiction. And he said, uh, well, um, uh Yes, and she says, well, I already have jurisdiction because you're here. Ooh. Now, let that sink in a little bit. I already got jurisdiction because you're here. And so that's what I've been trying to tell people mm-hmm. is that is that if you've got your own courts and you've got your own sovereign and you've got your own assemblies, why aren't you hearing the case in your own assemblies? Do you, you catch what I'm saying here? Okay, I'm telling you, you, the the divine law says you do not see the kid in his mother's milk. And for the enlightened, that means you don't, if if the trial has been held and and judgment has issued, you cannot hold another trial for the same offense because that's double jeopardy. So. Well, we are getting to that point of uh, gathering together with the proper, you know, you have to have the proper civil body politic. Proper, um, proper says who? Well, uh, you, you know, you have to have a jury of your peers. They have to know your conduct so that they can um, know and hear the case. Right, but, but, but the point being is is that if you two were, were to assemble on the land, the 
all you need is two. Yeshua said, where two or more gathered in my name, there I will be also. And the, the creator, Yeshua, which is, if you go from the Hebraic roots, Yeshua literally means Yahweh saves. So the creator of all says, I will be there. So, uh, you know, you, um, you go to Jeremiah 35, they said, because you could keep... Because the sons of Cain could keep their father's law for thousands of years, they will never lack a man to stand before the Creator. Well, when we start to return to that law form, we won't lack a man, a man or woman, to stand before the Creator. When we return to the divine law, we will we will not lack that man to stand before the Creator, or I say man, mankind, man or woman. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, you know, applying those div- divine uh, principles. The point being, though, is that after um, getting back to this to this 18 year old boy, they couldn't they couldn't affect the trust, and he told them, "I have no trust in you." And she said, "Where'd you go to high school?" He said, "I'm self taught. I didn't go to school." And so she tried every way from Adam to affect the benefit of the trust, but she mm-hmm. couldn't. Mm-hmm. She said, where did you live? He said, well, I'm alive right now. <laughs> she said, no, 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 where do you sleep at night? He said, well, I sleep wherever I am. <laughs> you see, so she's trying to you know, get him to invoke a curse against himself by spouting a residential address, uh-huh. which clearly is within the venue and therefore the jurisdiction of the United States, and therefore the courts would have the subject matter of jurisdiction and they could proceed. So what was the outcome? Oh, it's in it's in a perpetual loop because she said come down here tomorrow and um because she said, Well we have jurisdiction he said, Well I'm not, the only reason I'm here is because I gave a man my word and I'm looking to make restitution on something that I was in the wrong and he said I freely admit that I was in the wrong and I looked to make restitution. And she said, well, then you plead guilty. He said, I, I didn't settle that term, a plea, guilty or not guilty, and therefore I don't understand it, and I'm not going to use private law. That's a trespass. That's and funny. so she said, well, look, I'll make you an offer then. She said, would you consider uh, community service? And he said, well, if that's the way that I can make restitution, then I will be pleased to make restitution in that manner. And she said, okay, be down here tomorrow morning at 9, and we'll set that up. So he went down there that morning, and they wanted a residential address. He said, I don't have one. And they said, well, then I guess we're going to go back to trial. And he said, well, I guess that's what we were before, so we're right back to square one, aren't we? <laughs> wow. So until they establish the trust mm-hmm. and the fact that they've got a living soul trusting in the system, trusting in that um, and gaining benefits from it, then um, they have nothing. And they, they, they tried everything in the world. They tried to appoint a court-appointed attorney, and he immediately, he said, I don't accept that offer. And the DA got furious and shook his fist and said, it's not an offer. He said, yes, it is, and you know it. Ooh. And, um, <laughs> and then that was the end of the DA. And the judge said, well, actually, we had already appointed an attorney, and she withdrew early this morning because she tried to make a plea on behalf of this boy, and he said, you're not allowed to talk from me. And wow. so the woman the attorney, she, she withdrew, and, uh, and the the snake slithered off at that point and was never heard of. They, we didn't hear anything else from the DA again. But he was the head DA down there. He He piped up. He said... <laughs> You don't live in the state of such and such, he said. I have no claim of residency. He said, you don't live in the county of such and such? He said, I have no claim of residency or citizenship in that county. And it was just amazing because either, as I said, you know, he's very well schooled. And um, 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 his his dad, the um, the judge said, obviously you're his dad and, his uh, dad spoke up and said, um, she said, I will allow you to come up here and, and counsel your son. And he said, my son's 18 years old. He's a man. He can. He doesn't need counsel. <laughs> wow. And she had just dealt with some numbskull 18-year-old kid, who ch- a child who, uh, who 
uh, was smoking marijuana and she 